Don't let anyone bully you into finishing the year strong. It's enough to simply finish. Mm. Um, and I, I felt that. I um, that well. and the other, t- <laughs> the other tweet is from Nakia Tyson and she is at the fearless Kia. Um, Kia, K-E-A, not K-I-A. And she says, I think I've reached burnout mode for 2020. I just need to start again in 2021 because my memory in my brain is shot right now. Yes. Yes. That yes. Part. Nicole's happy hour. This is your co-host Amber and your other co-host Sheridan Chanel. What's good? Ow. <laughs> we back. We are. End of here. 2020. We're hanging in there. <laughs> I don't think I did it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Coming in clutch, Keith. Okay. <laughs> so today's episode is centered on the topic of burnout. Burnout is a phenomena that involves mental and emotional exhaustion, and your job is usually at the root of it all, a.k.a. we stress, Boo. okay? Stress! Stress, stressed. <laughs> I'm stressed. As we wrap up the year, we are thinking about how to either feel the burn and push through or do away with the end of the year strong tease by doing whatever makes you feel good. So if you're feeling the burn like we know we are, this episode is definitely for you. But first, let's pregame. <laughs> so first of all, let me just say thank you to all the callers. We love all the reviews, the comments. We see y'all in the comments. I try to respond as much as I can. Um, so we super appreciate it. So I think going forward, especially into the new year, we're going to start making sure that we pregame with you guys. So that means we're going to bring up either a caller or a listener letter and we'll read it or we'll have you on to tell us what your question is. So to kick it off, um, again, we will start with our first pregame caller. Hi, ladies. Um, I need some advice. So I recently got out of a three year relationship. Um, my boyfriend, well, ex boyfriend decided that he needed to take some time to get himself and his life together. And he has plans for us to get back together. But there is no set timeline and he's saying these things, but to me, it's not being made clear. I'm just unsure what steps I should be taking during this time. A part of me is saying not to wait for him, but I still don't want anyone but him. But we text and I'm just unsure if I really should be texting him every day because still that emotional connection. Do you guys have any advice? Uh, who wants do you want to go first what do you want what do you want to do here i mean i'm i'm it was just a lot to take in and process go ahead Uh, okay so i read a really good tweet and i saw i retweeted a couple times and it was like um learn manipulation because men will lie to you about anything and i was like oh convicted um girl listen let that man go. Cut him off. Like <laughs> where I got hung up when I listened back to it was that you even still call him your boyfriend and he's not doing the same for you. Um, more than likely another conversation. He's not running around being like, Oh, my girlfriend. Now he might do that in your face because it's cute, but in real life, he's not doing that. This man has you out he's getting all the milk without having to buy the cow the cow and i just think that that's ridiculous at this point he wants to have his space so give him the universe girl and introduce him to the milky way Hello. okay you all the you, galaxies you introduce him <laughs> you don't want nobody but him till you meet somebody better than him that's how i feel um and you're not even opening yourself up to do that and he basically set the situation up where he's open to do whatever he wants and have you. And he created an environment where you're now questioning, well, I don't want to open myself up to anybody, but only him girl, let him go. 
if it's meant to be, he will come back. Cause one thing I do know about men is they will move mountains. If they want to be with you, he told you he wants some space. Let him have it. That's how I feel about it. I would not break up with him. That's my advice as leave him alone. That's my, don't text him. No access. Let him go. Boo. Boo. We don't like I him. mean, he done broke up with you. So like what, what breaking up does she need to do? He done made the decision that, for her. Well, that's the th- that too. So, I mean... See, even I'm confused. That's right. why I keep saying that. It's, he broke up with you. He said, girl, I don't want you. That's what that means. Like, don't pretty it up and say, oh, well, he's focusing on his goals. What he's saying is, and I don't want you his goals are enough, not you. Right? He's saying, I don't want you enough. I don't want this relationship with you enough. I'm not... This is... Whatever this is, for whatever reason, it's not pulling him enough to feel like it's worth the effort or the sacrifice to put in the time for that commitment. Um... I want you to stop because being... goals are a thing forever. By the way, it's not like ooh y'all together and now but his I'm goal not is not you. To... You're not a part of his goals. Like, of the, not. Listen to oh, wait, what he's saying. Oh wait, but she is. If he can't find a new bitch, he is. Well, like, if he can't find a new bitch, and we don't need him to fall back. Goal. He should not be allowed. It's if he gonna like, fall back, I'm let him fall. The his door ass. Open. I'm keeping the space available Mm-mm. so that if I don't, my other options that I have lined up do not work out. I can fall back on my landing pad of you which is comfort i'm used to you you already know what's up um i just feel like girl we need to spend time on getting our self-worth together because i don't know how you could speak to yourself and feel like this type of situation is okay for you correct or or that you deserve this sort of lukewarm attention or correct love or relationship if you know what you want in life um and someone is acting like they don't know that they want you keep it moving keep it moving <laughs> okay because this is an opportunity like, for you girl. to also date and do what you want to do and he can't say nothing so guess what i would like i wouldn't be sitting out here just you know chilling waiting on this man to come back like he gave you no set time he has no plan none even if he had a plan i still wouldn't be fucking with I, it, yeah exactly like uh, either we are doing no. this or we're not but we you know like i think you need to be on the same page with mm. him and that you need to also take some time to go get yourself together away from him stop texting him him, stop calling him stop giving him access stop giving him emotional availability because he's not doing the same for you um and when another girl comes in because she will if she's not already you're gonna feel it and then you're gonna be sitting there feeling stupid won't. because <laughs> you decided to stick around so no like you do not have to do i just want women to divorce themselves from the chaos that is men because like there's so many men not all of them but there are some that just wake up and they choose chaos every day and i just want y'all to stop i want y'all to stop you control who you kick it with and who's around you you run this show they do not you do the choosing you choose. I mean, they choose as well, but I mean, it's definitely not this one sided thing, though. Like the fact that he made a decision doesn't mean you have to stay a prisoner to his decision. Like she can go. You're free to leave. The Milky Way. It's, <laughs> it's my favorite place. Oh, you want space? Perfect. Let's start right now. I Immediately. Think, I think you should go through the 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 cycles of losing this relationship um because i think you're avoiding the healing process of really going through a true breakup because this person is still very much in your orbit starts to use a lot of space analogies here um, <laughs> <laughs> but but i just think it's really hard to truly move on when your foot is still inside of this situation he's still texting you like amber said you're still calling him boyfriend so i just feel like you're not allowing yourself to truly grieve the relationship so that you can rebuild and you might not be on the next dick boy but you could definitely spend this time getting to know you and pouring into yourself and all that attention you're giving him you could be giving it back to yourself and attracting someone who's not gonna tell you i need space to get my life together we all getting our lives together like okay yeah talk to yourself like are you getting your life together too ma'am that if you part. are, then what's stopping the relationship on his end? Like, it just doesn't, no. Mm-mm. That part. You don't get to say, pause, let's pick this up in like three months. No, you I don't mean, get to say that. When they show you who they are, believe it. the believe first this time. Like, seriously. Okay, just uh-uh. do it. Just uh-uh. believe him. Uh-uh. Like, he uh-uh. already showed you. Like, uh-uh. it is what it is. If he, let's just say, okay, let's say you do carry on. Let's say it does work out. So every time he need to find himself when y'all marry, he gonna take a step back out of the marriage? Yes. It's a no for me. Okay. 
It's a no. But if y'all do work out, um, I think he should find you and really pursue you and really Correct. like come back the right way. It shouldn't Correct. be like, oh, you're sitting here waiting for him to call that type of shit. You know, you know, the type of thing that sits and waits for something, a dog at a door <laughs> waiting for its owner. And girl, that is not what you and are. That is the imagery. That is not that is what exactly you are. what's happening. And honestly, you stuff, are not that bad. type of behavior and that type of energy is not really attractive to a man. No. Honestly. And if he knows he can do this he's gonna keep doing it sis it's just gonna like he's oh, gonna keep doing it like a little bit of cut it off gets lost cut there. the vagina off because i know that's still be handing out on a platter cut it off do take it back so? at girl I think why else would he just hang on to it for what for what he's getting his emotional needs fulfilled. oh girl bye he is, goodbye goodbye y'all he's, act like he don't he got emotional needs as well though. he does but i don't think they he care about that his best Th- i don't around. think they care about that more than they care about that dick but game he can get his dick wet anywhere he yeah but is. but not as easily or comfortably or all the other it. things he probably it would probably come with a lot more if he was still getting his dick wet with her do you get what i'm saying like there's probably a lot of conversation involved. There's probably, <laughs> there's this probably is hilarious. a lot of oh this is truly yeah, funny. like babe, you told me well, you told me that you need. She's some still time calling him and- her boyfriend. <laughs> they're still like, dick well, being sweetie, exchanged like, in know, this situation. Well, sweetie, I'm I'm about Thank to you. be where I need to be soon. Though. She's still calling him her man. There's dick being exchanged. Okay. But we both agree, though. But this is she you know, needs I don't to think move. That's a headache, though. But men do like stuff. What? Like that, but I just feel like it would be easier to like have sex with someone he doesn't have such a. a it is, with. but I do think men like having sex with people they have an emotional attachment yeah, for, but they don't like being they responsible like well. for the f- oh choose chaos. I just said it every day they choose chaos, like, violence, and destruction, and I'd be looking like, damn, the hell, like, where's I the had, harmony? I had some um, I had a dude friend who was like. Oh, like, is your relationship so boring? And I was just like, what? No, it's because you don't fight. It's healthy as fuck because they don't know anything but <laughs> it's, chaos. It's the, it's the peace that I needed. What are you talking about? Like, no, I am very, I am so, I'm so happy. I'm so satisfied. There are some like, men. But they just think that, oh, wow. Like you don't really come to me and you don't really talk about any arguments or where's the fire. Like I think people confuse that with, passion with mm-hmm, fighting, mm-hmm. but there are also men who were raised in chaos. That's how they were raised they were not raised in love and that's how they think that these things should happen and again they then sometimes wake up and choose girl i saw a tweet (laughs) this one set me off i saw a tweet and it was like i think this was a parody but i'm not quite sure Mm -hmm. but this guy was sitting at the table between his mom and his girlfriend over thanksgiving and the mom and the girlfriend don't like each other and they're arguing across the table and they start throwing the food at one another Mm -hmm. and this girl retweets and says men are weird because y'all really think that this is healthy like y'all really desire this like Mm -hmm. this is what you want you think it's normal for your mama and your girlfriend to fight like this Mm -hmm. this is crazy like why would you want this because some men are brought up in chaos it's just what it is and they've never really experienced real love and so everything that they know is destruction and violence and that's why they act that way in relationships sometimes it also um, goes the same for women as well yeah um but I just think, yeah, this is why someone asking you, why don't y'all fight and stuff? That's all he know. He don't even know how to operate appropriately. He don't. I'm like, bro, you know that there's a way to have like no communication and disagree, but it's not like we were calling each other names or cussing each other out. Or no. Or each other's mamas or anything like that. No, they're not taught that. Got they you. don't even talk to each other <laughs> like that. Got you. Okay. Well, child. So the end result on that, sis, is let that man go. Get yourself together. That's how you Block him. That's, Block him off everything. That's go happy hour. Stamp like sealed and weeks. approved right there. You'll be so, like, you'll feel so much better. Boom. Okay. So did you know Instagram <laughs> had new features? And this kind of goes along with this conversation. But Instagram has new features now. It's basically yeah. called, um, oh, a vanishing, a vanishing uh, message. Is this with the update? Yes. Update this is with the update. <laughs> and so pretty much um, it's Facebook's overhaul that they were starting in September to change Instagram's messaging services and Facebook. Facebook's messaging services is the overhaul they were doing to respond to one competing with Snapchat and a couple other things and two with what their consumers were using most on um, mm-hmm. as new products and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So basically you can send a message and after the person sees it, it goes away like right a, after like they see it. 
even a message, a photo, it doesn't matter. But couldn't I do that with uh the photo in the beginning? Like, anyway? but this is a message. I'm talking okay, about so text. The message can do it as yes, well. Yes, I'm talking about okay. words. Okay. So um, I can do that with the photo. But you can <laughs> opt into this, so you don't have to do it. And so a lot of people was feeling like what? But what really was getting people was now people, if you screenshot the DMs, mm-hmm. it lets the person know you did it. Damn. <laughs> Like, oh, so y'all want the group chat to be dry? Damn it! How are we gonna pull receipts? Fuck! Like, <laughs> but how do they know what I'm screenshotting though? It doesn't even matter because you know it's sneaky <laughs> links going down in the DMs, bro. And if you sneaky linking and you you screenshot it, listen, and you screenshot it, you know what's up. Like, I don't want them to know I talk about you. Like, duh, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's going on? The group chat gonna be dry, bro. Like, it just seriously is. I think people are going to just you know forget it say fuck it and just do this i'm screenshotting i don't give a fuck like you just need to know like if you're talking to me i'm screenshotting and yeah i mean oh he'd be like oh did you just screenshot i did because that was foolish Mm -hmm. and i need somebody to read this Mm -hmm. so and if i don't screenshot it i'm I'm gonna screen record it boo there you go that's a hack (laughs) life hack screen record (laughs) it's the same process that part (laughs) that's a really quick tip for you ladies out there instead of screenshotting just it's a screen record. <laughs> it's still going down in the group chat. I'm sorry. It has to. It absolutely has to. I cannot let the group chat get dry. So, um, so our last pre-grain thing that I really want to talk about, I think that we definitely need to touch on because we are an Atlanta based company is the GA Senate races between Purdue and Loeffler, the Republican candidates and Ossoff and Warnock, the Democratic, um, candidates and all eyes on Georgia right now because these are the last two Senate seats of up for grab if we get these seats and i say we because i am voting democrat i'm not necessarily a democrat but i am voting democrat um the senate will have control of uh, the senate the democrats will have control of the senate which is great because um they will be able to get things done with president oh, biden in place so and um it, it's just going to move things along and move his agenda along mm-hmm. um there have been several republican um senators who have stated that they will not work with um biden if we don't get these two seats so it's increasingly important outside of the fact that um stacy abrams and several other um black women um from many different projects around georgia have flipped this state blue which Mm -hmm. is historic in its own way yes hand claps for that (laughs) (laughs) yes so there's been a giant push going into, uh, well, right before December 7th to get anyone in your, um, family that is 18 or older registered to vote, as well as you need to be checking your voter status to make sure that it says active mm-hmm. so that you can vote because we do know how voter suppression works in this state. Yes. Um, but early voting starts on December 15th it does. and goes all the way to January 5th. Um, most, uh, I think like over a million ballots have already been mailed in for oh, the absentee, amazing. which yeah. is way more than we've ever had vote in a primary before or in a runoff in a mm-hmm. Senate runoff. So that alone is great news to know about because Democrats knew, normally vote that way. Mm-hmm. Like they don't normally go to the polls. They'll, or they go, or when they do go to the polls, they'll go early. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Anyways, we just wanted to make sure that we put that out and that we keep everyone abreast of the situation and to make sure that if you do live in the state of Georgia or if you are still a voter in the state of Georgia, you don't live here currently right now, you might be away for whatever, that you please get your ballots mailed in on time or you make sure that you vote between December 14th and January 5th. Boom. Love it. That was the pregame, y'all. <laughs> and that, that went pretty well. I don't know about y'all, but I felt good about that one. I have my shots. That that part. So, are you ready for happy hour? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. Who's y'all? Okay. All right. So, this episode is about burnout and we're all at the end of the year and we're trying to 
hope for the best for 2021 but i just feel like girl 2021 and 2020 about to be twins i don't know i'm um, not claiming that that is not I my hope reality not. <laughs> i hope not um but i think we all are kind of feeling a little shell shocked about going into the next year and making big plans as quickly as 2020 was like oh nope girl snatch your edges today right, right. so everyone's either pushing through or they're just kind of chilling i don't know what are you doing Ooh, is it a mix of the two yeah because i wish i was chilling um (laughs) it's a mix because i wish i was actually doing it but i wish but it's like things just started like revving up like i definitely thought earlier in the year i was gonna be like ooh, yeah you know let's give into the the peace and the calmness but then it was like let's let's rev up and increase our workload and increase our stress as a result and now i'm just like foot oh, okay so like, wait motherfuck. do you remember does this remind you of the tweet that tia did tia maori <laughs> the one about um no that was the one if you're real friends if yeah, your friends are checking. Was friend. there was another tweet that was like if you don't come out of this pandemic with a new business or yes now i feel like that and i was not repping that at all in the earlier no. part of the year but now i feel very pressured Okay, like, so hell? I picked out up? two what? tweets that I saw that I was like, mm, this kind of sums it up for me. So one is from <laughs> L'Oreal Thompson Payton, and she is at LT in the city. She says, don't let anyone bully you into finishing the year strong. It's enough to simply finish. Mm. Um, and I, I felt that. I um, that well. and the other, t- <laughs> the other tweet is from Nakia Tyson, and she is at the fearless Kia. Um, Kia K E A, not K I A. And she says, I think I've reached burnout mode for 2020. I just need to start again in 2021 because my memory and my brain is shot right now. Yes. Yes. That yes. Part. Like, Those parts. honestly, I want to wrap up. Okay. Here's what I want to do. I want to wrap up all my projects this week and this weekend, meaning like most EXO stuff. So EXO podcast, EXO writing, all of that. And then I want to take the next two to three weeks to actually prepare for 2021, but Mm -hmm. in a very slow paced way, in a way that I don't feel pressured to have to meet a deadline or, or whatever the situation is. And to focus on like getting me and my thought patterns ready to start my own projects because I'm launching a couple things in January. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to wrap up early in December, but it's having me to have to say no to a lot of things and getting prepared to say no Mm -hmm. to a lot of things because people keep coming like, boom, 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 we gonna do this, we gonna, like, no, we're gonna go into the holidays and try to just, like, watch as the clock. Recalibrate. Yes, we're gonna watch the clock turn on December 31st. Mm-hmm. Like, that's all we gonna do. I'm gonna sleep through New Year's like I would normally do. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't feel... I feel the pressure of, ooh, gotta finish strong. Mm-hmm. But I also feel the pressure of, like, girl, relax. Right. It's, relax. it's honestly... I'm in the middle. For real. It's just... I feel like the end of the year at EXO is like one of those is like, oh, we got to turn this report in. We got to do this report. It we got to have, we got to do this. It is. And it's just because we're a big, we're, you know, we're a big media publication. We're a big media site, you know, whatever the situation is. But at the same time, I'll be looking like, so we kind of got this together in November. Like that's kind of how I feel about it a little bit. Um, it just feels like all these different expectations are looming and all these deadlines and it's just like, bruh, can I get a minute to chill? Like I'm, even though I'm in a managerial role, I still, a lot of what I do is still based in creative and then sales team comes to me. Oh, what ideas do you have for editorial? And I'm just like, girl, like I'm tapped the fuck out. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, even the for this episode, drive. y'all, we almost walked in here and had nothing. Right. And I was like, oh, let's talk about burnout. Cause that's what we <laughs> feel right now. Cause like, it's dry. It's just, it's just like how much more of myself can I give when everything has been taken from me? Correct. So it's just like. Ugh, I don't know. I feel pressured because I know myself and myself needs to recharge and it needs to recalibrate, like I said, and recenter. Um, but at the same time, I do feel like the other pressure from work stuff is saying, hey, we got to finish this year strong in order to get to a strong January 2021. <sighs> 
months. Like, <laughs> let me tell you about January 2021. Me, I'm gonna be side eyeing that girl the whole time. I'll be look, like, look, 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 bitch. <laughs> you better come in here, correct, or let me know what's up from the beginning. Cause mm-hmm. I ain't trying to, I'm not, we not doing what we did last year. It's mm-hmm. just not happening. Mm-hmm. And so that's my thought process is like, okay, make plans, but have a plan B just, mm-hmm. you know, in case things go sideways. Um, you know, just figure it out or whatever. But I, I mean, I think back on January 2020 and I was like, <laughs> so full of hope and Me full too. of spry and yes. magic. And the, the limitless possibility. I mean, girl, we, we were at the state of the union address. <laughs> we were, we were at the state of the we union. Were. We was rubbing elbows with, with other Maxine journalists. We was with Auntie Maxine. We was. We were in DC. My sister was treating us like, two little queens out we here were. okay yeah. and then uh, we get back we both get sick and then because right. i had like the flu yeah i still think you had covid bro From- <laughs> i still think you had covid i definitely had covid i, don't I feel definitely like I had it. i i hope not if if so please bless me with antibodies but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but. no, I definitely think I know I had it. I know how it came on or whatever. But, you know, and then, you know, I got over it and I went to Jamaica and it was great. And then I came back mm-hmm. and the world was like, world stop. Carry cool. on. Um, <laughs> okay. It was no carry on. It was no, it was none of that. It was none of it. Um, And so I'm just a little weary going into the next year, but I'm still not going to not make a plan. Mm-hmm. Cause I think you'll fail for real, for real if you do that. Mm-hmm. So there's a um Evelyn from the internet who is a true queen and I love her. We do not celebrate her enough. I love her. She had she had a video and she was like, Remember plans. <laughs> Remember goals. She was like she was like, I literally made goals in January. I made goals as well. <laughs> she was like, and look and it just <laughs> <laughs> her laughter about it was so funny because I was like, we truly all sat here and was like, yes, 2020, 2020 vision, 2020, exactly. vision. 2020 vision. The fact that, you know, I don't know. I just think we just wanted this year to be the year, you know, it was going to be the year in a lot of ways. I just, it was, it was so much like <laughs> we're turning the decade. We're getting, we're going to vote. We're going to do all these yeah. things. And I'm just like, yeah, I, I don't know. Have you ever seen? Okay, I have two memes that I love. Mm-hmm. One I love is the white man that's blinking really fast. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> that one favorite. Me too. Um, the other one I have is either the guy from um Zach Galifianakis or this other white woman where it's a bunch of equations going around their head and they look yeah, confused. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Because I feel that way mm-hmm. most times during the day, mm-hmm. and that is how I feel like 2020 slapped me in the face and was like, girl. <laughs> No, it's yeah. a no. It's a no. So I don't know. I'm I'm hopeful for 2021. I'm excited for 2021, but I am also I ain't forget. Right. That's all I'm saying. Right. I ain't forget what 2020 tried to do to me. 2020 tried to take 2020, me. 2020. 2020 tried to take me, and I was like slapped daily for me, girl, <laughs> girl, girl. I woke up this morning realizing like I tried to get over travel depression Mm -hmm. and I thought I was doing well. And then I was in a clubhouse chat room today and I was like, I avoided talking about travel and writing about travel because I didn't want to talk about it because I'm depressed. Mm -hmm. Like that was what I was doing. So Mm -hmm. I avoided my feelings by not like every time you would ask me like, oh, I'd like a travel story. And I was like, no, (laughs) nobody's going anywhere. So why would you want to talk about that? Aspirations. And I want to escape escapism. I did not want to (laughs) escape to anything. Speaking of escapism, let's talk about that. Let's talk about some (laughs) symptoms of burnout. Oh, yeah. Because we have an article from one of our writers on the site Mm -hmm. um i'll let you introduce it and talk about that a little bit and it's called the ultimate guide to maximizing your time and minimizing burnout it was written by ayana aman she's fabulous follow her um (laughs) so um the common symptoms of burnout include development of an escapist mentality which we just spoke about um that's definitely what i've been tapping into oh yeah Um, i was escaping into naps (laughs) feeling empty inside Obsession over problems at work or in life, pessimistic outlook on work and life, physical symptoms intensify and or increase, self-doubt, social isolation, behavioral changes, chronic headaches, chronic stomach or bowel problems, Mm -hmm. 
complete neglect of personal needs, continuation or increase in escapist activities. Hmm. What is okay. desire to drop out of society? That was me. Mm, me too. Hermit. Desire to move away from work or friends and family. That was me. That's still me. So what's the escapist activities? I don't know. What do you think? Like, I feel, I feel like, like my that's a nap. Activities that could be a nap. Mine was a nap because I was napping Mine a was, lot. I need to get the hell up out of here as much as possible. So I did get the hell up out of here okay. as much as possible. Mine was retreating into my <laughs> home and never to be seen again. I feel that. I feel I, that because I, I feel like that's a part of my hermit behavior when I'm here. Yeah, mm-hmm. truly. Like, I, and I was like thinking about it today i was like i've leaned way too far into it because like my bedroom is not like my oasis it's Mm -hmm. super comfortable in there and i don't want to leave and i don't leave like all day except for like you know to do my mom things or go Mm -hmm. to the gym but like i was like oh god like are you going to be okay when outside open back up and go back outside like i don't know if i want to go back outside oh we're dealing with emotional exhaustion i'm just tired bro like i just don't even want to think about all the things that have to go into travel and like, mm-hmm. do are we going to have to carry another passport? Like, but. what does that mean? Like, you know what I mean? I'm just, it's depressing because I, I never took travel for granted, mm-hmm. but now that I don't have it, I'm just like looking around, you know, that other, <laughs> that other meme where it's like, um, James Brown looking crazy. And it's like, this is what I mean when I'm looking crazy. That's me every day in my house. Like my hair just looks mad. Great. Like if y'all, <laughs> if I were to give y'all my number and y'all FaceTime me, y'all be like, Amber, pick yourself up, girl. Like what? <laughs> brush You're your hair to be brush your hair just as broken as you would like to be. In I home. scare my own child. <laughs> I walk up behind him and he's like, oh, you scare me. <laughs> like, I should probably brush my hair because my own child doesn't recognize me. Aww. It's terrible. But I do enjoy being in my home. But I do feel very, I feel like when I get out, I'm going to go way out for a while. And I'm just really going to soak it in. Like, I don't, I think I'm going to be extremely emotional mm-hmm. the first trip that I take. Like, mm-hmm. it's going to be a lot of tears and a lot of, like, coming to Jesus moments. So, I don't know. I was trying to fight it the whole time, but girl, I lean into the thing, the thing, the thing, because it's, it's no escaping that. No, <laughs> no. hell no. At this point. And I kind of think that with this season of burnout, I just feel like it's a little bit more compounded than usual just because of everything that happened with 2020. Cause I feel like burnout is something we typically experience anyway, mm-hmm. uh, especially related to jobs and work. And as, as actually, <laughs> According to a Fast Company article, millennials are called the burnout generation. Well, that's because we <laughs> we we grind. We're hustlers. We'll sleep when we yes. die. Yes. That type of stuff. Yes. And it's just completely unhealthy. It is. But I also think the inverse of that is pandemic to that. Correct. Mm-hmm. I think the invert and even with students, like just watching the st- my son's classes and hit the kids that are on digital. And I'm just like this is hell for them, you know, Mm -hmm. like they're burned out. Mm -hmm. They're ready to just Mm -hmm. be done. Um, But I think that that is what this generation has. But a lot of what they have is probably social media burnout and they don't realize it because they spend so much of their lives. And I'm a millennial too, but I'm an older millennial. Mm -hmm. So I kind of feel like, honestly, I feel like 80 babies is the last real niggas out here. So I'm just going to put that out there. But anyways, um, nineties as well. No, no, (laughs) absolutely not. Y'all are truly, well, 90, I'll give 90 and 91 a little, a little pass, but 80 babies, like, I'll be looking at y'all like, yo, y'all are wild, like, trying to play me like wild (laughs) out here in these streets. But, um, they spend so much time allowing people access to themselves Mm -hmm. and i think being in the in the pandemic and jobs and people realizing you're at home they're like oh you're at home so you have 24 hours instead of eight hours oh absolutely so you can do all of this work and i can zoom you to damn death every day meetings meetings you mean the counterproductive activity? You mean emails of all or voice notes <laughs> or maybe a video you could have just sent to everyone? No, you have to talk. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't even understand that. And somebody put out, y'all be on Twitter so much. I'm sorry, but there was a tweet that was like, um, why do I have to turn my camera on for the zoom? Just tell me why is that a part of the they zoom? They want to make sure that you're there. 
I am here. That's really the only reason. <laughs> I'll be more than happy to tell you my voice. I'll, I'll do my voice. They want you to mute, though. You're not going to just stare at me and I just stare at you. They want that so they can show that you're there. It's too much Muted. of a micro, a Muted. microscope on me of what I, no, it's invasive. It is. It's invasive. Mm -hmm. It's invasive. And I think that they need to stop. They just truly need to stop. So I think that to your point, I think that companies have lost all respect for any semblance of boundaries. Girl, say that. I'm just like, bro, <laughs> I get it. I feel the pressure. I feel it. Okay, cool. But that doesn't mean you stress me the fuck out just because you're stressed the fuck out. And it's I projection. Think That's it, what they it do. Is. It is. And it's like, bruh, you don't know what people are dealing with. And then you're adding another layer to the thing just by bringing your unwanted energy into their spaces during a time where they haven't set off for you to enter. Mm -hmm. But you're doing it because you feel like all sense of boundaries have just been erased, essentially, because working from home. OK, yeah, you're at the laptop. Oh, where are you going? You can't go nowhere. So Girl, what's, it's what's, the, you can't up? go nowhere. Right. I, can, I can go wherever. Like I can go outside and just sit. By myself in the grass. No, not, not when I have a request at 7 o'clock p.m. I can't even do it. But see, this is why when I voice note you in the morning, you mm -hmm. ever notice it's always after 8 o'clock? Mm -hmm. Even though you tell me what time you get on in the morning, mm -hmm. I always voice note you after 8 o'clock, mm -hmm. unless it's urgent. Mm -hmm. And it's usually not. And then I'll start with this is either work related or this is non work related. Yeah, like so you know what it is, yes, yes. you know, so that you can be, you can prepare your mind to like, exactly. can I listen to this right now? Yes, exactly. But a lot of people do not have that forethought. No, but a care. lot of people don't have responsibilities on other things. They're responsible. They're, they're, they're dependent on other people. And that's why they don't have that mm -hmm. foresight. So Cause I'm just like, damn, like really, really? Yeah. yeah. So you think the first voice I want to hear today is yours? Correct. So you think the last voice I want to hear today is yours? And at least add a greeting, <laughs> a greeting to it. Cause I'm always like, Hey friend, like I do that with all my friends, you know, or people that I consider a friend or that I have a good relationship with. Mm -hmm. I start with a good greeting. Mm -hmm. This goes into bullying to finish strong though. This is what they're doing. They're just <gasps> bullying you. That's a good point. They're just bullying you. That's all mm. that they're doing. They're bullying you into work. They're bullying you into getting things done. They're bullying you into listening to their shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it, uh, I have this problem with my dad. I love my dad a lot. But when my dad is at the house babysitting my son and I walk in, he immediately bombards me with stuff. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I need to pee mm -hmm. first. Then I need to take off whatever the hell it is, a bra, some drawers. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I need to put my things down. I need to sit down for a second. But he has no awareness around where I just came from right. or what I've been doing. He thinks I do nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's because I'm not working a traditional job. Mm -hmm. And he comes from a generation where, you know, you're clocking in and out mm -hmm. and that type of stuff. He means nothing by it. Mm -hmm. It's good hearted, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I have to tell him, stop talking to me. Mm -hmm. Give me a minute. But he used to do the same thing to my mom. He used to drive her insane. <laughs> he used to drive her insane. My child does that to me. Or he'll wait till I get on the phone and he just starts having an entire conversation while I'm in the middle of another. And I'm looking at him like, I, uh, do I do this to you when you're yelling at the video games? Mm -hmm. No. Like, what are you doing? It, it's just about. Tapping into someone else's like space and asking, do you have the bandwidth for this? Ooh, yes. Mm -hmm. Can you, can you take this on? Mm -hmm. I had a phone call from another company that's reaching out to me to, um, run their content and run their, um, their, uh, other stuff that got going on. Mm -hmm. And before she asked me anything, she said, I know you've got a lot of projects. She was like, um, do you have space to take on something else? Cause I want to talk to you about another job. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that gave me like, okay, I know where we're going. It also let down whatever anxiety I may have been right. getting ready to have mm -hmm. so that we could have this conversation and I could hear what she said and what she needed. But people don't ever start that way. They just like, Oh my god! It's a lack of self awareness. It's just, it, I don't know. I don't know, girl. It's just, it's just, it's a lot. It's, it's truly a lot. But it is, a, it, it is a form of bullying. I'm sorry. It is, and you know, this brings us to the remote managing remote work burnout. 
article that we have on the site. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> are we are we yeah, really just in case. This is just organic. This is organic. Okay, <laughs> let's go. Yes. Just in case um, you know, you guys want a few key tips to stay energized while doing this remote work processing and um you're feeling a little burnt out, this is how you can manage it. Um so number one is creating calendar boundaries. Um, oh, I love that. that means you don't go straight from your bed to your desk and log into your laptop. You create set hours and alternate time blocks within an eight hour window that people can contact you and that you're working on work. Great, great, great. I love that idea. And here's why. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to start some consultation services in 2021. And hey. I love the idea of that. My Calendly is like, pick your hours that you want. And mm-hmm. I was like, what? What? At first I was confused. I was like, I thought I was supposed to. And then I was like, no, Amber, like you can choose the days you want to do this, the mm-hmm. days you want to work, how many appointments you want to take mm-hmm. per day, how many you want to take per hour, like all of those sorts of things. And it just gave me another sense of like ownership over my own time, but freedom as well, because I was like, oh, I've never had this before. Right. And so that feels really good when you take time to block off your calendar like I tell people I've said this on the podcast before Mm -hmm. I go to the gym either between 3 and 6 or 9 and 11 or 9 and 12 Mm -hmm. in the morning don't talk to me Mm -hmm. just don't I'll take voice notes from you Mm -hmm. or a few other people but more times than none I don't Mm because like I'm in here I need my mind to be focused right whatever the situation is Mm -hmm. I love blocking off my calendar okay what's number two prioritize your work schedule okay what are we doing um, okay. So your task, you put them in a to-do list and then you're going to arrange them by priority. Okay. Your priority, not necessarily someone coming to you and saying, Hey, I need this done. I love that. You know what I'm saying? I love that. And I think that's important too. Don't think that you have to do something just because someone else has an emergency. Um, be honest with them. Tell them, Hey, I don't have the bandwidth that or I can, or you can tell them offer an alternative. Like I can get this to you by the end of the week or by the end of next week. Or at least have a conversation to say, does this need to be done right now? Exactly. Or can I push this a little bit? It doesn't have to be. Here's why. It doesn't have to be hell. Yeah. And then you're overwhelming yourself as a result. But when you say stuff like that, when you say, does this have to be done now? If not, here's, I need to push this and here's why. Mm -hmm. Um, What that does is, um, it lets them know I can't do this whole thing, mm-hmm. but here's how much of it I can get done by here. So when I turn it into you, there's going to be pieces of it that you need to have done mm-hmm. unless you can push this deadline, mm-hmm. period. Mm-hmm. And you have to tell people that kind of stuff. You do, because sometimes people get so accustomed to your yes that they don't really take into consideration the things that you have to do. Mm-hmm. They just kind of feel like, OK, cool. Like she got it. Especially if you're a freelancer, mm-hmm. because you're freelancing for several different things at one time. Mm-hmm. They need to know, like, I, I, they may not know, so you have to give them, you do have to give them a little bit the of information to know. Of yeah. your work mm-hmm. load. Mm-hmm. Okay, what's next? Begin taking real lunch breaks. I'm terrible at this, so this is a big one. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm one of those people that, oh, like, I might not even do lunch to be 1,000, but if oh, I no. do, I might be like, oh, I'm going to woof this down right quick, or mm-hmm. I'm going to do this while I'm doing my work or answering emails, and it's terrible. Like, you need to separate I'm taking some, lunch and a nap. real time. As a, as a freelancer, <laughs> I'm taking lunch and a nap. So when I say lunch, I mean lunch and a nap, mm-hmm. so I can wake up refreshed. I'm old, mm-hmm. and I get the itis quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, So I'm taking lunch and a nap. Mm-hmm. If you want me back refreshed, you will allow it me sounds, to take a nap. It sounds powerful. But for those nine to fivers, though, <laughs> I mean, like I say, take maybe your you lunch. Have to do a nap, like a quick little. 15. I mean, I have definitely taken a nap take on, a on my. 15. Oh yeah, for sure, mm-hmm. definitely. Um, but if I'm in my office and see, I haven't worked in the office in a long time, so mm-hmm. it's hard for me to say for them, and I don't want to speak on their situation right. without really knowing it. Mm-hmm. I worked in the OR, mm-hmm. so. I, we couldn't take real lunches because I had to stay through the whole surgery from beginning to end Mm -hmm. unless someone would come in for me. And a lot of times we were always busy Mm -hmm. in between cases though. I'm going to my car. I'm going to go take a nap. No one call me. Right. No, unless there's an emergency, do not call me. I will not be back until the patient's in the room. You can call me when the patient gets here. Mm -hmm. And that's what I used to do. And they used to know, don't mess with that girl on her nap time. Just don't. I'm a napper. I like it. 
I'm not a napper, but I definitely do want to be a better luncher. Yes, I want you to do. I want you to do lunch. I want you to be like, okay, like, I'm gonna get back to that okay, at twelve thirty. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna take a little hour, make me a real lunch, or order me some Uber Eats if my budget allows. Mm-hmm. And you yes. know, <laughs> that's the that'd be the thing. Indulge. Yes indulge in it treat yourself girl treat yourself and indulge you know don't feel like you're on a hamster wheel you just got to keep moving 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 moving, no please god it's horrible all right number four analyze your work schedule and ask for something more flexible yes i had to do that i had to do that this year I was working a lot Mm -hmm. and it was a lot for me from home Mm -hmm. and it was taking away from me being able to write Mm -hmm. and it was a smaller position Mm -hmm. even though it was a lot Mm -hmm. and I realized that how I analyzed my situation was I had more earning potential writing Mm -hmm. than I did at this particular job Mm Um, and they were asking me for a lot, even though the role was very small, Mm -hmm. um, as far as pay in the company. Mm -hmm. So I basically told them, okay, I'm only coming in three days a week Mm -hmm. and I'm coming in for these amount of hours. Mm -hmm. But outside of those hours, I'm not taking a phone call. Mm -hmm. I'm not emailing. I'm not doing anything Mm -hmm. because I need to focus on the other job that I have or whatever else I had going on at Mm -hmm. home. So it took about a week for them to get used to it. But when they did, they were like, okay, we see what's going on here. So then they stayed within the boundaries of what I needed. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody cannot do that. That's true. Everybody cannot do that. Mm -hmm. And I was willing to risk that job Mm -hmm. to be able to do that because of the earning potential that I could make somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But I still think you can still have a conversation with your boss and just say, hey, you know, for about a week or two, I need this. Um, I should be fine later on. Mm-hmm. But for at least this week or two, this is what I need to get through the week. And then right. let them give you options because even if they say no, then ask them, well, are there any options available that I can um, that you can give me that I can think about and see if that'll work better? Because I absolutely need this. Like, mm-hmm. I truly need this. Mm-hmm. And they should be able to do that for you. Um, Don't be afraid to get fired or any of that type of stuff. They need to tell you that. But this also goes back to the conversation of in a bigger situation. Use the FMLA, child. Use it. Yes, use the FMLA. Or I just think it's important to advocate for yourself. Like one of my coworkers, for example, um, she realized that she wanted to spend more time with her family. And we do remote work, obviously. Um, so she didn't want to work the traditional like nine to five hours that we're supposed to work that we go over. Um, but, but, <laughs> but, um, she didn't want to work those traditional hours. So she was like, Hey, I'm going to start working at five and I'm going to be out by one. Mm-hmm. And that's something that her and our boss were able to work mm-hmm. out because it's like you're still doing the work mm-hmm. in the time allotted. It's just not necessarily that you're here after one. So I think even something like that could be something worth trying to finagle also to make sure that when you walk into your boss's office that one you have no infractions that's a good point too and like what two, kind of employee are you what kind of employee are you to even be asking this because baby they could fire you okay if you're not doing your damn job that's let's just be 100 because some of y'all don't that really want to work and want to so get a paycheck terrible though that we got we gotta no we have to say it because fired because we're asking hey can we just adjust the hours? We're remote no, working. I, correct. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that. Let's <laughs> okay, stick okay. with bad employees okay, for okay. a second. <laughs> okay. Because okay? some of y'all are terrible. Don't go in here asking for stuff and you haven't met your metrics. Right. Meet your metrics. That's true. Okay. And maybe even go a little above and beyond your metrics, maybe. Also, be- become invaluable in your position. That's true. Then too. start asking for That's stuff. That's true, too. Um, don't, unless it's like a, a medical emergency or something of that nature, a, a mental health emergency, something like that. Elsewise, don't try that, sis, cause that you, then you just, you just pushing it. Now, regardless of being a remote worker or a worker in the space, I think that's a general feeling of, I can't ask this because they won't give it to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, if you're doing your job and you're doing your work, um, I, I just say shoot the shot. Right. They, all they can say is no. All they can say is no and then ask them, well, is it is it possible there's any other options of a different type of work schedule, anything of that nature? Because I really do need this mm-hmm. and I don't want to quit. Mm-hmm. And then they start thinking, 
Yeah. It's like a heart attack. It feels like that. Yeah. But that's what you have to say because they need to know exactly how far you are and how, and I know some of y'all are not going to want to roll that dice. I got it, but it it, it feels scary, but you need to let them know, like, this is serious. I'm not asking this because I'm playing around. I'm asking because I actually need this. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you need to be like, I'm really trying to do my job or, and do it effectively instead of saying uh, quitting. Mm -hmm. Say I'm really trying to do my job and do it effectively, but I need it to do, I need it like this though. Mm -hmm. Is this possible or what is something that looks like this that we can do? Mm -hmm. That's what you can say. All right. What's number five? Get up and get ready. Period. That's self-explanatory. Take a shower. Have have a glass of water. Shake it off. Do the breakfast. Yes. Do the workout. That part. Do the meditation. Walk into a different room in your home. Take a walk outside. That part. Go sit at a desk. (laughs) Something. Get dressed. Change out your PJs. That's even for the parents with digital students. Mm -hmm. Listen. Listen. We got my son a desk. His grades came up. That's all I got to say. (laughs) All right. What's number six? Take your vacation time. That's my favorite. It's my favorite as well. It's my favorite one. She said, if you have skipped over all of my other tips, please read this one. <laughs> please, God. <laughs> so, yeah. um, You know, I think vacation is a difficult thing. I think it's just so easy to talk yourself out of, like, not doing the PTO thing. But why? Why? Okay. PTO comes in your benefits package. Hello. So, for them to, uh, you know, dangle this carrot in your face to come to this job, they got to give you some benefits hello this is for your benefit Mm -hmm. so you need to use it Mm -hmm. over 50 percent of people don't use their uh vacation time and that was a statistic that came out i think 2018 or 2019 Mm -hmm. and then they burn out and they have uh, and jobs are complaining about high turnover and they're like well we don't understand why when we gave you vacation time and you didn't use it Mm -hmm. okay especially when jobs have flex time baby if they have that flex time (laughs) <laughs> I have hacks for that. Okay. So you just don't need to feel guilty. The The company will not burn down. If you leave, it will right. not happen. Even if you don't want to take a whole two weeks or something at a time, you can sprinkle days. Like Absolutely. Sprinkle days, days around something. the weekend, around mm-hmm. a holiday, mm-hmm. around a conference, mm-hmm. sprinkle days, mm-hmm. um, or take all your two weeks or not, whatever you need to do. But, you know, be smart with your vacation days or whatever. You can really spread that if, if you only get two weeks or three weeks of vacation time. You can really spread those days out throughout the year. You really could. Plan it. Mm-hmm. Make sure you do it. Even if you're just doing a staycation, even if you're just mm-hmm. sitting at home, whatever it is, use those days for your good because that is what they are there for. The company does not want to lose you. That's why they give you those days. Perfect. Period. And also, I think it's important to note that work-life balance is harder to achieve when you're doing everything at home. Um, but yeah, you're still working though, sis. So, that or part. bro, take off, take off the time. That part. <laughs> that part. So. I mean, I know we're in a... We can vacation at home. Yes, we can. Yes. I mean, I know that you're in a panoramic. We're in a panoramic right now. But you can... (laughs) But you can maybe find you a little office space to work in or find you a little place that you can go to that's not a lot of people and get some work done or whatever the situation is. Um, Or maybe create another space in your home that is not your bedroom or outside or whatever. There's ways to do this thing. You just got to get creative. I know that's the thing for me. I'm, I've been thinking that like once I get everything up and running and I start making a little bit more money, I want to rent out my own office space. I need oh, to get out of the house. Dope. Yeah. Out of it. I so is that, understand that, listen, is that the end of all of our, that's the end of our tips. Okay, cool. I love that article. That was really, really good. It was great. It was written by Julia Rock. She's a career expert. Come on. Rock career. Be ex- okay. <laughs> Be an expert at your career or whatever. Okay. Not funny. All right. So, um, do we have any tips or tricks for finishing up projects and things like that i obviously the prioritize them yeah i do i prioritize them by what can be done this year and what can be pushed to 2021 that's good that's good i do that i also prioritize them by like i'll set aside whole weekends if i need to for Mm -hmm. activities that are not stressful to me Mm -hmm. so that they might be little things um or if i need to write write a quick article or something like that i may save it for the weekend Mm because i know i can get it done in like two or three hours Mm -hmm. or something of that nature but i also write it out on a big whiteboard and i also use a sketch pad Mm -hmm. and I write on there and I'm like here's what needs to be done 
here's what here's what I can get done quickly or here's what it will make me feel like I, I'm getting stuff done. Even if it's a small task, I'll feel like, oh, I started the ball rolling, even though it's not the big thing that needs to be done. Mm-hmm. But um, those are certain those are the things that I do. And I try to look at projects that can be wrapped up time wise, like like I was saying, things written for XO or the podcast. I think we came together and was like, let's get this done now mm-hmm. so that we can have the rest of the month to start planning for podcast dropping in 2021. Hello. So I think that that's that's a good way to start wrapping up projects and things like that. But you got to write them all down. So, mm-hmm. um, OK, do we want to talk about setting boundaries? With the people around us, because you know what's gonna happen as soon as you free up your time, you know what happens. What? Everybody be like, "Oh, she ain't doing nothing." Let me ask her. I am doing something. I'm resting. I'm always doing something, <laughs> even when I'm sleep. Resting is an activity as well. Resting is an act of self care, and it's an activity. And it is an activity. So there we go. That part. <laughs> I actually wrote <laughs> an article that is called, um, I don't have the bandwidth, 12 effective ways to, to say, say no. no. And, and it was amazing. Listen. <laughs> listen. Let me tell you something about the word no. It is my favorite word in every language. Okay. No. No. Nit. No. 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 Nine. No. <laughs> no. I said nah, no. That's nah. Nah. <laughs> okay. So um basically I wrote this article about 12 other different types of ways you can say no without having to say no because a lot of times women specifically and women of color don't feel comfortable saying no. Mm-hmm. We've been socialized um, in this society to be agreeable at all times. Mm-hmm. And then black women even more so because we don't want to be painted as the angry black woman. Or difficult. Or difficult. And so that's why we usually take on more and we're used like the workhorse mm-hmm. at work because we don't want any negative feedback or anything negative to happen to us. Mm-hmm. So... I just wrote out, I just sat there and I was like, I wonder wonder how many ways I can come up with no. And I could have kept going, but I stopped. (laughs) Um, Anyways, so I wrote, uh, I don't have the bandwidth for that right now. Let's circle back to this when I have less on my plate. I like saying that to people because it lets people know, like, I'm going to come back. I'm going to check back on you. I heard Mm -hmm. what you said, but Mm -hmm. I can't process it right now. That's Mm -hmm. another way to say no. Um, I'm too tired to absorb that information at this moment. I say that to my dad um, because he likes to drop tons of things on me (laughs) at one time. And I'm like, I'm not absorbing anything you're saying right now. Um, (laughs) I love that. (laughs) Let's stick a pin in it. Uh, let's That's my a, favorite. Yeah. Let's take a pin of this for now and think about revisiting it later because I want people to just say, okay, no, remember that because yeah, I'm coming back to I'm it. Back. But just stick a pin in it. Um, or I like when people say, let's take that off the table for right now or, or whatever the situation is um, to just let you know, like, we're just going to put it over here. But we're coming back. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't download that with you. I can't download what you are asking me to do. That just simply means no. <laughs> it's a no. Because I, I can't, I don't understand what you're saying right now. I just don't get it. So I'm sorry. I know I don't need an explanation. It's just, I don't want to get it. Um, thanks for reaching out to me, but I'm going to pass it this time. This is for my girls who do, um, who do brand work or anything of that nature. When people reach out to you in the DMs, it's just like, listen, like it's a no, but mm-hmm. thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, Unfortunately, at this time, I'm, I'm, I'm unable to do that. But here are some people I can refer you to. I like saying that because I appreciate people coming to me because they know I can do the work. Mm-hmm. But I also keep a Rolodex of people just in case I can't do it. Right. I love that. Um, like you're spreading the love. Spreading the love. Absolutely. Um, it's a no for me at this time. That's I just. It's a no. It's a no. It's a no. I like that one. And I like doing it with a smile and a shake of like a affirmative shake of my head. Um, <laughs> I don't think I'm the right fit for that, but thank you for bringing that to my attention. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause some people think you can do something that you never said you could do. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I say that one. And I, I point them in the right direction at this time. I have a lot going on, so it's probably better for me to find a different res. It's probably better for you to find a different resource. Um, Cause I just don't want to do it. Um, <laughs> honestly, I'm not going to be able to give my best effort. Now, this is something I say in relationships. Mm-hmm. I don't think I can give my best effort to that because people want to ask you for stuff, especially that. men. I just, I'm not going to give anything to that. So thank you for sharing it. Thank you. But it's a no. 
Um, I would love to help out, but I would be overcommitting myself and that would serve, that wouldn't serve either one of us. I like saying that with family and people I actually really do care about because it's like, I really do want to help you, but I can't. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the last one is I'm going to have to respectfully decline at this time. This is also for my influencer girls and this is for my nine to five corporate girls. And this is for, this is for all the girls because so too. this is for all my professional girls, no matter what profession you're in, that's from stripping to doctors it's a no um i can't do that so no i have to respectfully decline respectfully and that's all we have um i love it bam, bam, bam. i love no, just kidding. <laughs> yes. my favorite is i'll politely pass it this time that's that's what i do all the time I yeah yeah I think I'm gonna start using respectfully a lot more often just because culturally it sounds great culturally right now is going up and it just feels good when I say it so um so I'm gonna use at least six of those that you mentioned I used all of them in some form or fashion anyways well guys before we burn out on this uh episode girl <laughs> that's a wrap on this episode of exo nicole's happy hour if you're loving what you're hearing so far please drop us a rating and review on apple Podcasts and show us some love in our instagram at exo happy hour if you have something you want to share with us we want to hear from you leave us a voice message on the website exohappyhour.com we listen to them daily and even respond to a few on air Thanks for listening. And as always, check out exonicole.com for all other updates. That's it, guys. <laughs> <laughs>